Hey, everyone. Uh, well, here we go. This is why Pastor Mike and I do not do live videos together or really do any recordings because we're always goofing off and, and acting silly. And so, um, but Lydia could not make it today. And we have, we're supposed to be on the Q&A last week and we didn't make it. So we're doing it again this week. I will tell you, um, it is really hard when you try to do something for the kingdom of God. Something's always preventing that. I see this big spoke with wrenches being thrown in it every single time that we step out to do something. And maybe if you're uh, doing YouTubing or maybe you're a minister out there and you're also trying to get your message across, please tell us, are you experiencing the same issues? Because it's really, or is it just because we do spiritual warfare? I wonder. But I am Pastor Ernestine Graham. This is my husband, Pastor Mike Graham. And together we pastor a church here in Peoria, Arizona. And um, so tell us a little bit about you, Pastor Mike. I don't think people know too much about who you are. What did, what did you do before you decided to join your wife on this crazy adventure? Well, I, <clears throat> I was a single man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going 40 years ago. No, we're going, let's go back to 10 well, years ago. What well, were you doing 10 years on, ago? You started and you said on this crazy adventure. And that's when the crazy started. <laughs> it was 40 years ago. But no, um, in all due truthful on understanding the question. I I did I worked for Maricopa County Sheriff's Department and I was a detention officer inside of Fourth Avenue jail. So for nine and a half years. Did, do you think that that was a good training ground for doing deliverance? Yeah well yeah you you deal with the demonic all day and then you come home and deal with whatever we had to deal with that evening. <laughs> good point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That a, that's a good point. So we left off with me and Lydia a couple of weeks ago, um, and we were doing some questions. We've opened it up. If you have questions about, well, you can send in a question about anything, and we'll be glad to do our best to answer it. But we're predominantly trying to discuss things like deliverance, healing, um, spiritual warfare, things of that nature that most people are not talking about because we want to open it up in a really sound biblical way um, for the body of Christ to be empowered to, for example, Pastor Mike's just got an amazing, amazing testimonies and stories of when you were in the jail and you were constantly dealing with supernatural things that your sergeants would need to deal with in the natural, but you would see things in the spirit realm. And I do want to open up to that, but let's go ahead and answer this question that we didn't get to last week. And so we are recording this and not live um, because um, why are we recording this and not live? Well, well because we normally have 10,000 bloopers <laughs> and uh, we didn't want to do live bloopers. And uh, there you go. That's the truth. At some point we will make yeah. a video of our bloopers and we have <laughs> Quite years of bloopers yeah years of bloopers we are at times a blooper and so <laughs> <laughs> that word blooper is a funny word where do you think that word came from blooper i think we should look that up well it's just a good what is good it southern word i guess oh it's, it's a, a southern word like <laughs> squezed okay everything's southern for him and um and we'll we'll not talk about his southern roots right now but so one of the questions that we did not get to was this question about how do you know if a demon needs to be cast out of you or your spouse <laughs> that's a really yeah, good question that's a setup you, that was a setup set me up for that yeah that was a setup well here's some <laughs> ways that you can know and I, I do write about this and um my deliverance training manual and also i think i covered a little bit in the Strongholds Manual, maybe I put it in the Strongholds book, Demolishing Demonic Strongholds. If you haven't gotten that book and you're looking to get involved with deliverance or do deliverance or be delivered, this is that's an excellent teaching. We're also working on our ministry school online. And so we have some videos available of me just recording out of those books. But um, we'll try to put a link to that in here. We're still working on the school, though. 
Um, so how do you know if a demon needs to be cast out? Well, number one, the person may have a physical binding or a chronic sickness that just doesn't go away. No medic, no, well, no drugs help it. Uh, no, nothing seems to help it. Also, many a times that person gets prayer and that doesn't help it either. And it's like this man that we come, we had, I think we maybe said this the last time me and Lydia, but this man had come and we've had lots of experiences like this, but this one was so, um, obvious that I like to share it, but he had come to our church. He had to one of our Tuesday nights, never been here before and was not familiar, even though he was a believer for years, wasn't familiar with spiritual warfare. And he came up for prayer for his knees. Um, I was, I think both of us were calling out words of knowledge for healing. And he came up and I stood there and looked at him and listened for the Lord. And what do you want to do? And I, the, the Lord told me to call out a crippling spirit and I could see it, a very ancient spirit in his bloodline. It called this spirit out. Pastor Mike and another team member were there praying as well. And we just started praying in tongues. And the tongue was really warfare, kind of different language than my normal prayer language. <clears throat> and this man started shaking and quivering from his feet all the way up. And this thing threw him on the floor. And anyway, he got delivered and he got healed. And he probably would not have been healed in his knees had we not gotten to the demonic root, which was the source of his pain. Yeah. You know what's really interesting to me about that story was this man looked really healthy. Totally. Yeah. He's a, it's he only was 41. A, he was 41 years old and he's he a muscular is. guy. I mean, he's 41 years old and he's a muscular guy. Healthy looking man. Um but I guess he recently stopped running. Yeah. And stopped hiking, after stopped running. that prayer session, he started running again. And that's just so shocking to me. We still, it, yeah. ain't that we're, a, ain't we're that never a, not surprised. Ain't that warming to your heart to know yeah. that God uses this little ministry. Yeah. This, this ministry. I don't care. I don't care if this ministry had a thousand members. When you think of things like that, it's still a little ministry. It's it's what God took this little group of people and blessed that man. It just goes to show that our obedience and our listening skills to the Lord yeah. are manifested in God's reality. In reality of God, right before the reality eyes. of God, the power of God, the power of God. <clears throat> yeah. If we weren't listening, if I had just said, OK, let's lay hands and pray on this guy's knees and just done that because that's what he asked for. We wouldn't have seen him get healed like that because there was a demonic source to his sickness, to, to his pain. Out. So people may have a physical binding or a chronic sickness and the demon needs to be cast out. Very often there's a fierce. Did you have something else on that? Yeah. You know, the question was. How do you know when a demon needs to be cast out? Mm -hmm. To me, if I got a demon, it needs to go. <laughs> Ain't that obvious? Yeah, but what so, are the... so in this case, we didn't see that, though, until she started praying. And then the instant it was spoke, you got to remember this man also told us that he wasn't used to this type of ministry. He right. was used to a a prim and proper type of ministry where you walk in and you, you love on people, you love God, you love what you're doing. But as far as Christians having demons, he wasn't too understanding. And he so he came in with the thinking that he probably didn't have a demon. And yet the instant, and he was standing firm, a lot of these times people want to stand and go well that's strange seeing people fall on the floor well until I, it actually happens that's a really good point because a lot of times we're resistant when people are praying over us and the anointing is there because that demon is going to fight to keep its place in that oh, person so good. yeah so this guy was standing there and he's like kind of solid like hunkering down 
He even said, I didn't want to go down. I didn't want to fall. So he was obviously resisting the work of the spirit of the Lord, but he couldn't. He did, he did, I don't think he realized it wasn't really him that was resisting. It was the enemy that was resisting. Mm. So the, the really neat thing about it is there's none of us can say, oh, I cast a demon out. Mike cast a demon out. We can't say that because we know that was a Holy Spirit because number one, it's given, it's given, we're given a word of knowledge. And number two, um, as soon as that word of knowledge is released and you, 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 you address the demonic spirit, such as I did when I said crippling spirit, that is the power of God. That is the Holy Spirit addressing that demon. And so that demon begins to shudder in that person, begin to, in this case, shook him from his feet all the way. And literally, we've not seen that before. I've seen people drop really suddenly uh, when a demon, you know, was manifesting. But I don't think I've ever seen one person thrown on the ground like that, what guy yeah, was. Yeah. And he's been coming back every Tuesday, every since, and he's yeah. been learning and um, getting empowered and equipped. And hopefully he's taking this back to his family. So that is one way um, a physical binding or chronic sickness. That's one way uh, you might notice that a demon needs to be cast out. Um, also, a person may have mental oppression, such as disturbances in the mind or the thought life, uh, mental torment, confusion, doubt, unbelief, and various forms of mental illness. I, I teach that that's a deaf and mute spirit based on um, several things in the Bible. And Jesus did call out a mute and dumb spirit or deaf spirit. And basically that that spirit connects not just to the hearing gates, but to the understanding gates. You understand your brain actually comprehends and registers what it hears and relays it into a message into your brain. So if you have a hard time hearing, it's going to affect your balance. It's going to affect your um, mental state. It could cause depression. Um, hear, hearing losses. I mean, I've been through that battle recently with some stuff in my own life. And that was the first place I went was, is there a deaf and dumb spirit manifesting again over me? Um, so that is one way I always, it's spirit of heaviness. That's in the Bible, uh, Isaiah 61, um, spirits of error, also mind spirit. So anywhere that there is a, just an irrational thinking, like we're specifically seeing in our nation during election time, we may, and we won't get into that, but there's definitely a deaf and mute spirit upon the earth working and wreaking havoc and in America. Antichrist. Yeah. So then uh, spiritual problems such as extreme difficulties, overcoming sin or refusing spiritual uh solutions to their problems or chose choosing rebellion um, or there's a, just simply a demonic presence, any doctrinal error or deception that a person is not willing to, uh, to look at biblically. So for example, great example of this one was recently um, our worship pastor was sharing with me an article about um, Christianity being a, or Halloween being a Christian religion a celebration, a Christian celebration. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I read the article and there was not one scripture reference in there to support their opinion. And that's the problem with Christians and people in general. Everybody's got an opinion. Like, for example, those who support Harris as presidency, if you pay attention, you won't find them to be able to stand on any solid ground. They just keep repeating and parroting the statements that she makes. Why? Because they're mesmerized or hypnotized by her word salad. Um, so you, you won't hear that in a person who is willing to be open and learn. A person who's learned and a person who's taught and instruction, instructed are not going to debate the Bible unless they're being empowered by a religious spirit or an antichrist spirit. So that's another way. Um, being in bondage to occult literature, um, not being able to get rid of things like, uh, for example, and I know this this tips some sacred cows about music, right? So rock and roll. Well, can we go back to the comment you made about the person thinking that Halloween came from a Christian background mm -hmm. and they get that because they go to the all saints day and right. they take it back to the Catholicism and, and bring that into it and say, mm -hmm. that's because that's where it started. Am I right. correct? Yeah. So man, that is so far from the truth. It is far from the truth. It's an evil celebration and and they'll say well 
Halloween was uh, before Christ. I believe this article said that, or this person said this. Um, be Halloween was before Christ, but it's a Christian celebration. That doesn't even make sense. It can't be before Christ and be a Christian celebration. <laughs> it's a pagan celebration. Right. It is called Samhain. That is the bottom line. Witches, warlocks, Celtics, they do this kind of thing. People want that want anybody who wants to have their cake and eat it too can make up a recipe that fits them. Oh, so oh it's good. only got a little bit of sugar in it. It's only got, <laughs> well, look, if we put a little bit more fiber into it, that'll counter the carbs and we can have our cake and eat it too. It's kind of like legalizing marijuana. Well, it's God's creation. Not true, by the way, it's God's creation. And therefore we can have it because he created all things and all things are good. Well, it could have came up with the thorns and the thistles. Right. One right. could have. Right. Yeah. Psychedelics <laughs> are not created by God for recreational drug use. They're yeah. just not. And that's foolish to think that because we are called to be sober minded all the time. Why? Because your adversary is seeking someone he can he can devour. He's roaming about occupied with you, roaming to and fro, looking to chew somebody up and hopefully spit you out and wow, destroy your life. That's so good because I was just speaking with um a young person this morning that struggles with marijuana and he was like i don't understand if if it was placed on this earth why is it such a god created all things and i was like well and we had this kind of this discussion and then i simply told him i said just pray about it before you do it and tell me what the lord says because i know this young man hears from the lord he tells me he he says i pray and god will answer me well, that's what he says. But how does God answer you if you don't read the word, if you don't know God and his character? I wrote Mantle to the Divine intentionally to teach people the character of God because we are we could hear from a multitude of gods. Back to this example about, um, you know, mixing up the cake so you can have it your way, so to speak. Oh, so yeah. yeah, it's the same way with uh, rock and roll for an example. When I was really touched by the Lord and I was challenged to do the 30 day Caleb challenge back when I first started attending church, Mike and I, I was a rocker all the way. I was one that confessed, you know, I was also a stoner. I was one of those kinds and I was going to die a rocker and I really loved my music. And I believe that music speaks to us and it empowers the soul. It can empower the soul for good. It can power empower the soul for evil. And so I, but I, I stopped listening to rock and roll and I chose to challenge myself for 30 days. And before you knew it, I found myself just deeply worshiping the Lord and glorifying God and everything I was listening to. And that was wonderful. I still had all the music CDs. I still had the channels tuned in on my, my radio or my stereo. And I would flip back and forth on an occasion, but 90% of the time I found myself more into Christian music until I was completely, that's all I listened to. But I still didn't get rid of the music. And then one day we did a, a what we call a clean sweep, trying to find out why I was still demon possessed and uh, <laughs> and why he was. And we began to discover all kinds of unclean objects in our house. And we started getting rid of those things. And I parted with all the music. And um, I remember that was really it was really difficult at first because I felt I was losing a part of me. I was losing my identity. You went through all the Elvis stuff and and the Native American stuff and that's why we struggled because we were losing a part of our identity that we really believed in. That makes a lot of sense. So with that being said, it kind of brings me to one of my questions. Can items that we have in our home, you know, I, I wanted to ask you this. I know the, I know the answer, but can items we have in our home that we might classify as sacred or something that we really hold dear to us? Could it hold something else other than, just what it is. Well, how did we discover that it could? Well, <laughs> you're, you're kind of talking about it right now with some of the music. It's right. So some of the music, one of the things that we learned earlier than the situation with the music for me was when you had that um, Native American oh, right. coyote thing. Sure. And so Mike had, he's, believe it or not, this white boy's got like three quarters native in him. And so <laughs> he has, he was drawn to all this native American stuff. And I always felt like it was wrong. And his dad, your dad was really new agey and got into stuff. So 
felt like it was really wrong to have that kind of stuff. But, right. you know, I can't control what he brought in. And what, one time we stuck that and a couple other Native American objects in that extra bedroom that we had. And every time we went in there, it was like, it was like a demonic force was in that room and it was gaining more. We finally got rid of it after having a team come in. They prayed. And when, when prayer teams come into your house, they're supposed to be operating through the Holy Spirit, Correct. seeing, hearing, getting words of knowledge and being led to certain articles in your house, artifacts that might have some kind of a, a curse on them. Uh, the Bible talks about a cursed objects. Joshua is a good example of that. So anyway, that was one. And then we had to get rid of that. We were having a lot of demonic encounters. And, you know, I remember when we did get rid of that. And I remember when that team came in, they they immediately walked down and they were like, there's something wrong with that room. Yeah, immediately. And, and we knew then that there was something more attached to it and to that than that. But, but I did tell you over and over again. Oh, like yeah. there's something oh, wrong yeah. with this and you would not get rid of it. And what it was, this was an actual, an actual coyote's leg that had a coyote skull on it. It was used for an, uh, war dances for, they would Shaman rituals, do different rituals, rituals with it. And I used to collect all kind of Native American stuff. And I don't even really know why <laughs> other than. I just thought it was fascinating and it was part of my heritage, but I threw, I actually threw out about a $10,000 arrowhead collection. I didn't sell it and I didn't want it to go to anybody else to have the problems that I had with it. Yeah. So I literally, we burnt what we could burn and we tossed what we tossed and we didn't give it to no one, didn't want anybody else to have it. So we just released it and took our losses so Canada. don't put a value on on oh, your good. freedom don't oh, put a value good. on your freedom that's really good you can't so uh we then we were i was still going through stuff i just we in the beginning of our journey with the lord we lost everything we lost our business our trucking company we lost uh, we, we lost our home we we had to sell every toy that we had we sold everything we sold everything to live on for three years we were going through this journey of losing everything but for me, I understood God was saving our marriage and and our son had been saved. He was the first one who'd gone back to the church and met the Lord for the first time. We had both been saved as children, as you guys might call it. I did not feel I was saved by the time the Lord found me. I feel like he did save me at that at the point that oh, we got born point. again. Yeah. But anyway, so we were going through all that journey. And I think this was one of our last ones. I was, um, two things were happening. I was writing the book, the prayers on the Antichrist. We were getting ready to do our conference for the first time. And I did not, I, I didn't really a hundred percent agree with my pastor that rock and roll had an Antichrist spirit. Remember that I was so rebellious, even four years into ministry, I was still, I still had this thing in me that wanted to defend rock and roll. And, um, and that without getting into all that story, I, I just, I can tell you that it was a place of hiding from me as a young person so and it was a real strong place of rebellion because my dad hated uh rock and roll and he would say you're gonna lose your mind if you keep listening to that stuff but my dad liked to listen to whiny country singers like hank williams and i couldn't deal with that so anyway just to give you a little background on this but i had gotten rid of all those dvds cds and then um had this encounter when all of a sudden i'm arguing with the holy spirit about this antichrist i'm writing the, the, te the message that God gave me, I'm writing the prayer and I'm writing the teaching. And as I'm writing it, it's actually talking to me. So Holy Spirit is writing it through me and it's coming to life inside of me. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, there's something truthful about this. This is the truth. And I, my heart hurt because I had been in such rebellion. And then all of a sudden Ooh. I heard this song playing in the in the house I mean, nobody was there but me and i heard the song sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band which had something in my history connected to it and i and that was um that led me on the track to look up the beatles and look up alistair crowley and i sat there absolutely dumbfounded and really going i can't believe i rebelled against all of this so real quick so i walked from there i don't remember all the steps and time frames it took but i found the doors of dvd and I was writing about the doors in my teaching. 
And I found the, not DVD, CD, CD, four CDs in the doors. And I'm like, oh, I never got rid of this one because I was like, four CDs of the doors. This might be worth money one day. And what, what could it hurt? Yeah. I opened that up and there was a pentagram, plain as day on the uh, paperwork in there. And I had never saw that before. It never, I never saw it. So I was like, no problem. Took it straight out to the trash and was done with rock and roll at that point. But you know. But when I say rock and roll, I was heavy metal, Ozzy, Black Sabbath. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Hardcore. I was never that. I could just never, I could never get a grip on it. But you know what that did for you? And, and and I can I can see it just as plain as day now. When I mention this, it's probably going to make you cry. Just Happy feel night. it. But you're the crier what, now. What it what that actually did that day wrote a chapter in history hmm. for your life because that's what led to writing so many books that you have written yeah how many books have you written four four written and published i have lots of i have hundreds and hundreds of blogs and teachings and i've been blessed to write from the lord so yeah and you're such a great writer i'm not saying that because you're my fan I, i'm my her favorite, favorite fan. fan i am her favorite fan i'm her i'm her i'm her favorite bodyguard i will protect her <laughs> The Holy Spirit is. Yeah. But anyway, let's get but, off of this but, subject. No, let's let's stay on this subject. And um, it kind of led to a lot of the books that you wrote about spiritual warfare and talking about some of this, because that's where you really started digging in and looking. You yeah. really started evaluating the, the enemy's camp. Yeah. And the enemy true. made himself very clear in them days and he made himself very clear to us even as we were going through that as you went through it he came in and and came in and attacked and it, us personally i mean it was a it was a spiritual battle for us for many years but in reality what came out of that is much greater than the music ever was to you mm. and have more value for sure and more value to people that we now minister to so if i say like the the question that one of the answers to this question with spiritual problems such as extreme difficulties in overcoming sin or refusing spiritual solutions so there was this uh which we now know part of this was the altars that i was dealing with and that part of me did not want to give up but the, the holy person in me that was born again was contending with Holy Spirit. And the rest of you are going to lose. The rest of the parts in you that are wanting to be where they're going to be and what they want to have, what they want to have. If you have Holy Spirit connected to the core person of who you are, you're going to win every battle if you choose to battle. Amen. And I think that's the part is that we don't choose to battle. The other way we know that demons need to be cast out is through op oppressive circumstances that are caused by demons and they com they involve confusion or poverty. Always, always dealing with poverty. And um, the enemy is always looking for a way to get into your finances, because if you if he can get in your finances, he's going to he's right. going to touch your soul. Right. He's going to get a hold of you and cause worry, um, fear. If you're sick, that can hit your finances and cause financial problems on top of being sick. And if you're chronically sick, there could be a spirit of infirmity there. So you could have a spirit of infirmity and a spirit of poverty. And one of the things we learned through this journey, those first three years of being, you know, we were captivated by the Lord and yet God was letting us lose everything, including uh, where well, you lost your mom. She died in that early time frame too. Correct. Like, and my dad, right before we turned to the, no, Sorry, my dad passed three years prior, yeah. but your your mom left this earth around a year after, I think, that we started going to the church Correct. and started to get our lives together. So I say, I was thinking this morning, what is the value? I'm going to totally take this off course for a minute, but I was thinking about what the value was of church. I know it sounds crazy, but I was thinking, why bother with so many people that could just pick up the word of God and just learn and have a relationship with God. And then I realized um, sometimes people go to church having absolutely no understanding of sin whatsoever. 
So when they go to church, they are supposed to learn what sin is. And the church isn't teaching what sin is. The church is giving feel good 20, 30 minutes of something that ramps up your life in Christ and makes you feel good and blesses you, but you don't know what sin is. So when we started going back to church, we were not going to a church that preached sin, but the worship was, was opened to bring conviction. And then I started studying the word on my own almost immediately. And then within six months, I was facilitating Bible, um, Bible studies right. And um, and doing that, the truth started to open up. You can't read the word without the truth opening up and then de- noticing that you may be a sinner, that there are some things you need to get rid of. <laughs> so if you can't get rid of sin because you're sitting under oppressive circumstances or you're dealing with emotional problems or you can't seem to give in to the spiritual answers to to your sin, then you may have a demon that is hindering you and keeping you from being able to fully embrace the gospel, which is really repentance, repentance and salvation, repentance and refreshing days of restoration, redeeming the times. God redeemed our times. I mean, we were on the cusp of yet again, another into our marriage. And I really, I look back on those days and think I, I'd probably be dead by now. If the Lord had not intervened when he did, I know I'd be dead and you'd yeah. probably be long gone having had enough, you know, both of us. So, um, yeah, you know, so we, we began our journey in deliverance yeah. when we said I do to Jesus Christ. Yeah, absolutely. That's when our marriage really began. Our, yeah. our marriage, we began back in 1985, but. It was, that was a rough beginning. <laughs> our, our real beginning and the real, the real love of our lives came in then. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I wanted to say something going back to what you were kind of saying and even a little bit farther, you know, when God wants to come in and clean you up, when he wants to come in and man, when he wants to come in and clean you up, and wants to do it his way, he's probably going to take something from you. Mm, come on. That you really want. Not need, but want. Ooh. He's coming after, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's coming after things that we really want and like music. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, you were just hanging on to it. This might be worth something someday. And he's like, I don't want that in your life no more. I don't want them beats. I don't want those rhythms no longer in your mind. I don't want that hate coming out of your mouth. Mm. Your mouth is going to be sacred. It's going to be sanctified. It's going to be used to speak the gospel. It's going to come out. And you're going to preach and you're going to prophesy to people. You're going to have words of wisdom, words of knowledge, words of understanding for my people. And I don't need filth in there. So good. And that that is a great. One more thing before you interrupt. One more thing. Here's a question. Don't you find that most people are willing to accept words of knowledge and words of wisdom? that they know are true words of not words of knowledge a word of knowledge is of course something that you know about the person that you have no reason you should know right and the lord placed it up on you to deliver to that person so that would convince them that it's of the lord mm. correct mm-hmm. so don't you find people it's easier to preach to them and preach with them and i'm i'm not preached with them, but to speak into them after you've given them a word of knowledge or wisdom. We have their attention for sure. But I like what you said, because you're right. We're singing these lyrics. And as Christians, you're singing lyrics to songs that are secular, that are meant to worship the world or Satan or self. And there is, there is power in those words. And yeah, the words that I sang were either 
you know, occultish in nature that I wasn't aware of or satanic or murderous or angry words or hatred. And I never even really thought about that. But yeah, so as Isaiah's sexual to nature, sexual. So as Isaiah's lips were touched by the coals. So mm. that's what happens when you so when those things are removed from you. Yeah, we're having a really good conversation <laughs> there. So we're going to start recording all of our conversations because this seems to keep us focused appropriately. And <laughs> no, well, we're going to let you go because we've probably been on here about 30 minutes or so. And let us know in the chat box, wherever you see this at, what you thought of this. Is this something you want more of? We're trying to reach people with um, with the message that the Lord has given us. And we want to do it in a way that's fruitful. I One of my pet peeves is spending time doing things that have no godly kingdom result. At the end of the day, I have to know that my life mattered for that day and for eternity oh, that wow, I've so done good. something to sow the kingdom into your life. So um, if this is something you want to see more of, um, let us know. We're trying to figure out the best time to do a live. And um, so that's part of why we recorded this too. We just want to find out when's the best time and is this something that's going to be able to help you? We want to connect with you. If you're our online audience, we really, really want to connect with you. We are um, transparent. What you're seeing here is who we are. We are. We don't really have an agenda except for to, God said, take the media. Two and a half years ago, the Lord told me, take the media. So I've been attempting to do that in multiple ways. Um, not because I want to be a celebrity. I don't. I don't even want to be seen, to be quite honest with you. But because... We need to cover the airways of Chris, as Christians, as believers. We need to cover as much territory as we can. You know, if you're a believer and you pop out a video with a quick testimony of your day that, you know, or a scripture or something, you're being a part of taking the airways for the kingdom of God. And so that's a part of doing this, plus just getting the truth about deliverance, healing, and spiritual warfare out there uh, with a real strong biblical support and foundation so that's really what we're doing pastor mike thank you for being here with me today and um, it was my pleasure it was really good it, i really enjoyed it, it maybe we'll get together sometime both of us with lydia yeah all right well we got lots of great ideas because we're those kind of people we're those big idea kind of people and um <laughs> <laughs> so all right well god bless you if you're looking for a church we are at 88th avenue in union hills top floor if you are not able to be in arizona or come to us in person you can catch us on tuesday nights at 6 30 arizona time and saturday nights at 6 30 arizona time if you've got any questions you can email us at info at spiritwindhealingministries.org. You can check out our website at spiritwindministries.org. You can check us on Instagram, LinkedIn, X, Facebook. We're, we're everywhere. We are YouTube. everywhere. If you see this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And um, yeah, you know that when you get the notifications, you can, I don't know how many of you know this, but you don't have to have your notifications going ding, ding, ding all the time. You can have them on silent so that they're up there. What I do is I put all my notifications on silent because I don't like to hear it. So I might come down here and see a YouTube video and I would just pull it down and then I would leave it there because that's one I want to go back to later. So just a little tech uh, talk for you, for those of you who don't want to hear ding, 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 ding all the time. All right. God bless you on your Jesus journey. We'll see you next time.